Hello, everyone, and welcome to the presentation on identifying Dhaka's landscape feature. I am Salma Begum, doctoral researcher in Hulubin, Belgium, together with my promoter and co author, Professor Bernadine Mulder, presenting today's discourse on Dhaka. Dhaka is a continuously changing city in the changing world that needs critical evaluation. Perhaps an alternative reading of dueling in Delta and cultural practice can offer a new dialect. This presentation aims to elaborate the discussion by looking into the historical alley that tried to tackle the question of how the presence of river shaped the settlement, sociocultural behavior, and use of public open space in Bengal Delta and Dhaka. In response to the question, the discussion will be discussed in six segments, where at the beginning it will try to frame the geographical context of Bangladesh and current practices in Dhaka, also looking into the historical episodes of past practices, the shifting dialogue between land and water, and the development of public open spaces by the sociocultural behavior in Mengo Delta, followed by a recommendation. Bangladesh is of Southeast Asia and occupies a major part of Bengal Basin, which comprises three the main river system, the Ganges, the Brahmaputra, and the Meghna. And the basin also is comprised of two uh, kind of lands that are the natural controls of river shifting and evolution. And the tertiary highland is one of the lands of the Bengal basin that is comprised of the Burind and Multiple Tract. The tilting of Multiple Tract is one of the um, reasons uh, among the three for the Brahmaputra evolution, which is a significant event happened uh, during the last uh, two centuries and had a long lasting impact on the overall context of Bengal Delta. And Dhaka is situated with, in the southern uh, tip of the Modipur tract. Dhaka has a flat land with slight undulations. Um, a large part of Dhaka is covered by the low lying depressions um, and alluvial floodplains. Also, it has a lot of dissected um, water systems that create a unique uh, landscape uh, for, for Dhaka. For centuries, people have depended on, depended, depended on, on the unique landscape for many purposes, uh, which has started to change uh, from 1960. So from 1960 onwards, uh, in the pretext of urbanization, um, all the wetlands um, are being filled up, as well as a lot of water is being extracted from the main aquifer system of the Pudila aquifer. Consequently, the groundwater level um, has depleted um, from 1985 to 2000 up to 10 meter. At this moment, Dhaka is a mega city with its wild urbanization by domesticating the nature. And the illustration shows the episodes of landscape transformation um, through the human intervention um, over the period of the time, especially highlighting the land water interface, how the ecology has been changed um, <clears throat> with the with the engineering legal framework to control the nature. Moreover, the uh, blue water bodies are transforming into golden um, sands with the implementation of railways, metal road and uh, riches, the water has become an infrastructural city. Dhaka used to be dissected by a lot of water bodies, marshes, wetlands, um, floodplains, um, natural depressions, which are kind of evaporating with the high degree of urbanity, especially along the river edges and inland waterways and, and in agricultural lands. So the city is um, shifted to a new paradigm of industrialized era that is far from the reading of a Delta city. The land filling practices has become one of the prominent features of the post embankment era that completely destroyed the hydrological dynamics <clears throat> of the city. So the journey of Dhaka from the uh, Venice of East to a rickshaw capital is quite dynamic to visualize 
the modern um, <clears throat> the modern uh, practices and and the modern modernity in the urban um, fabric superseded the monsoon fed landscape, which made Tata alive but contested. If we look back to the 1840 and the previous era, we could see the strong uh, evidence of a life based on watery landscapes, especially the Muslim living community. Muslim is one of the finest clothes in the world that was produced near Brahmaputra and Shitalaka River. And um, for Muslim production, a specific kind of tree is needed, which is Putikarpas tree that requires um, certain um, a geographical location, a specific humidity, temperature, um, and weather. So the specificity uh, was uh, possible due to the presence of river water bodies, monsoon climates, and um, forests. This artisan-based community can be traced back from 7th century Abitu and Pala dynasty, when these three kind of artisan based community, Conchil Maker, Tati River, and Textile Merchant, were seen to migrate from south part of Dhaka to north part of Dhaka. Uh, Dhaka at that moment was forested with a lot of uh, trees, which started to change after the enactment of uh, laws, crucially after the Permanent Settlement Act in um, 1793 and the Bengal Eluvian and Diluvian Act in 1825. With the deforestation and the clearing of marshes, the um, ecology of Taka has changed. As the earlier traces talk about the um, artisan based economy, so the research tries to uh, look more deep into the evidences. The images portrays the life of a weaver uh, from India and as well as from Dhaka, uh, also showing the presence of the river, um, which is the major reason for the settlement to settle here, as well as how the water was influencing the production of Muslim as well as the life of people. Another form of settlement found in this context is the agricultural based community, which is evident from the painting of uh, Hassan Sultan. This also um, is uh, showing the uh, regular rural home state, as well as how the rural people appropriate um, the landscape elements as a social space. Um, another painting from Hassan Sultan, um, showing the cultural practice during monsoon, when all the areas are inundated, um, fishing becomes a regular scenario in, the, in this context. Uh, nonetheless, there is another form of settlement, uh, which is the nomadic community in the flood affected region, uh, which, you, which is totally dependent on the water. And, um, um, and, and this image from 1860, uh, of a Bangladeshi village uh, near Dhaka um, shows a complete picture of the nomadic people, the Bede community. During Paleolithic period, when Delta was underwater, uh, that proves that human settlements evolved in the adjacent hill regions and valley. So based on the study, can be said that life in Bengal Delta uh, forms three sort of settlement, which is life on water, life on land, and life on hills. So the settlement in Bengal started almost 20,000 years ago in the hilly uh, forests of uh, southeast region and elevated regions of northwest and east Bengal. And the shifting cultivation uh, shown in the sketches here was one of the traditional practices. The houses were dispersed in different um, valleys and made on stilts. This one portrays the life on water, which means the fisherman community that temporarily moves on the boat during monsoon and the Bede community, um, which uh, is the nomadic people um, that all over the year entirely depends on water. And the third one is life on land, which is the artisan based and agriculture based community. The artisan-based community can be traced back from Buddhist period and the most uh, profound 
land-based settlements are agricultural settlements on a fertile plain known for its rain-fed rice cultivation. During summer, this flood plain looks like a green bed of paddy fields, which completely changed to blue in monsoon. So the transient character of the shifting flood ground determines the distinct pattern of the settlements. Based on this fluctuating hydrology, three distinct patterns and subtypes uh, developed across the country. So these are the nucleated pattern, linear pattern, and dispersed pattern. On the northwest part of Bangladesh, and due to the absence of river, the settlement largely depends on the surface tanks. Uh, whereas uh, on the western part of Silet, uh, in the presence of um, water field depressions, the settlement evolves along the uh, river on natural levee. And on the southern Silet, as the floodplains are prone to inundation, so the settlements are uh, built on the raised mounds that is protected by a dike um, on its periphery. And in Chittagong Hili area, uh, they offer a mixed uh, sort of settlement. Dhaka shows three sort of settlements um, depending on the terrain and water system, but two is uh, prominent. That is the linear settlement along the river on natural levee and the scattered one um, uh, in, in the inundated area. Over the millennia, Bengal people have developed cultural practice, rituals, and values that resonate with water. So based on that, two types of model in Bengal were developed. For lower lands, there are the big elevated build system, which is locally known as Kita, and the elevated platform system, which is known as Macha. And for upper lands, the determining factor for the homestead and uh, upper land is the Conas maxim. About 100 years back, the symbiotic relationship between land and water started to develop with a raised mound, which is the Pita, explained earlier, about flux level through a deep elevated build system, since this rising mound, flanked by agricultural field, protects the settlement from getting wet out by water during monsoon. So raising social mound became, uh, raising the mound became a social phenomena. And uh, gradually the number of mound increases and together evolves as a form of village with these different elements, where water plays um, a significant role and water system exists in different skill across the village. Also offer uh, space and functions to mediate social interactions and to produce public open space. So typologically, the water system can be developed, uh, divided into five categories, which is um, the large communal space is the uh, nodir khat, so the river, and then the surface tube oil, which is the kuatala, the pond, the most small domestic scale unit, which is pond or pupu, and then the surface tube oil, that is the koltala, and, and dighi, um, which is the extension of a pond. So these are the five systems, nodirka, um, kuatala, koltala, pupu, and dighi, uh, which has a strong um, influence in producing social space that would be explained later on. Besides those uh, water-bound public space, there are other spaces culturally developed um, in Bengal, which are known as uh, Halot, Mat, Maidan, uh, and this looks completely different during monsoon. So in monsoon, the village looks like an archipelago, uh, and, and all the activities takes place on the remaining open space on BT. Traditionally, Bengal people uh, prefer to socialize um, outdoor spaces and uh, water always acts as a cat catalyst. So they, they kind of develop a form of language uh, to deal with the water and in between land and water uh, cut, Mm, is the common form uh, or language that have developed um, throughout the practices. So the card um, exists in different scale. We started from a uh, domestic unit scale uh, to larger scale public open spaces. 
and near uh, Ibga. Ibga is another farm of open space, uh, public space uh, that is used twice in a year during religious congregation. So ghats are the most used features of the Bengal cultural landscape uh, named after its functions such as uh, Kukul Ghat, uh, Nudi Ghat, Shoshan Ghat, etc. Besides, the floodplains near the river always host multiple uh, activities. So this is a common scenario of Ghat Bajar. Uh, Ghat is a common form of periodic market, happens weekly. Um, and and um, this same place uh, appropriates uh, another sort of activities such as festivals, folk music program, open theater, um, uh, which is known as Jatra, uh, and religious congregation as shown in the figure here. Another form is evident uh, in cultural uh, practice and in literature known as Tola, the space under the tree used by the kids and elderly you know, to chat. Um, and this um, Tola is still evident in the present urban system. Uh, every year during Bengalia celebration, uh, a chorus um, um, uh, under a banyan tree um, acts as a stopping point of the celebration. So the presence of this tola is pretty evident uh, as much as in rural system and in urban system. And when all, all when and when all, a lot of uh, trees together lined up along a street or a hollow that takes another form of exchange center or public open space known as BT. Um, and the word uh, originates from a Sanskrit word. Uh, and the form of this public open space can be evident from this historic image of Chinchula Hubli from 1721. So based on the precedent study, it can be said that the concept of social space um, derived mainly from the geoclimatic factor, uh, sometimes as a household extension. So the illustration shows various forms of forms and typologies of social space in the name of Tola, Ghat, Halot, Biti, um, Maidan, um, uh, which is a um, ground uh, of negotiation between built coin ground and shifting ground as, as Matu mentions. Uh, and then Utan, um, the most common form used in, in a home state um, scale. Uh, mat uh, normally in front of uh, mosques or schools uh, used as a play field and the raised mounds that host multiple activities, uh, especially this sort of pavilion character exists along the um, Balu River uh, at, at this moment and the band and then Ibka. So dueling in Delta um, has an intrinsic way of living with landscape that doesn't necessarily root to the ground, rather to a shifting flux ground um, that is beyond boundaries. And therefore the organic embedded and reciprocal traditional practices to the land water interface can create an alternative way of dealing with Dhaka's landscape. The land water threshold can be addressed through traditional spill practice and floating decks that are adjustable with rising water levels, non-continuous porous um, more earth molds that let the water flow might create new kind of public places to keep the existing water landscape in an Arandaka. Perhaps um, a floating units uh, network offers a response to existing hydrology. Traditional ghats that work as a hinge between land and water can produce an active public realm on the edges Part of the larger scale floodplains um, next to existing river, more precisely, the Maidans with multifaceted reality could be used as a productive landscape that might create social interaction. The Maidan becomes a patch of the economic and social hub within a large landscape system. Thank you uh, for watching.